In this session, we'll look at how Autodesk Vehicle Tracking can help us analyze the vertical clearance of a vehicle path. Note that this session represents part two of a two-part series. In this recording, we'll generate a ground conflict report by comparing a vehicle path to a civil 3D surface. First, we'll take a quick tour of the drawing. On my screen, I have a proposed corridor model representing an intersection. I have also defined a top surface for this corridor. If I hover, we can see it's called Prop Road Top. Let's take a look at the surface. I'll do that by selecting it, and then in the General Tools panel, I'll click to bring up the Object Viewer. I will then hold down my left mouse button, and we'll orbit this up, and then I'll zoom in, and we'll focus on the intersection. As I orbit this, pay note to the crown of the road right here. This will be important in just a second. For right now, I'm going to click to close the Object Viewer, and I don't need to see this surface on screen. Let's hide it. It's still selected, so I'll come over to the Properties palette, and we'll change its style to No Display, and I'll press Escape. Note that I have also hidden several other aspects of this design just to simplify things on screen. If I hover right here, we can see that I've used vehicle tracking to perform a swept path analysis for a large truck. If we zoom in on the intersection and take a look at the envelopes, we can see that the truck can successfully make this corner. Let me pan this over. Let's take a look at the truck I'm using. I'll do that by selecting the path, and then I'm going to go to the Vehicle Tracking Ribbon tab, and in the Swept Paths panel, I'll choose Insert Profile, and then I'll click to place a profile in the drawing, and I'll press Escape. If I zoom in, we can see that we are working with a 5-axle expandable deck low boy. Pay note to this area of the vehicle. It has a very small ground clearance. In fact, if we take a look at the measurements, we can see that the minimum body ground clearance is just over four-tenths of a foot. So, here's my concern. I know this vehicle can make the bend from a horizontal perspective. I would also like to ensure that I have enough vertical clearance to make this maneuver. To further illustrate this, I'm going to select the path, and then I'll click to place an outline. And we'll drag the truck around. Here we can see it making the bend. When I get right about here, the tires on the trailer are at the lowest points of that surface, whereas the lowest part of the trailer is crossing the crown of the road. I want to make sure that I'm not going to be damaging the road or the truck by making this maneuver. Let me press Escape, and I'll zoom out. Fortunately, to run this analysis only takes two steps. We'll start by projecting the swept path up to meet that proposed corridor surface. I'll do that by selecting the path, and then in the Review panel, I'll click the Path Properties button. I will then choose Surfaces, and I will select the proposed road top surface as my final surface. I will also click to project the plan onto the final surface, and I'll click OK. Once the path has been projected up to that surface, and it's still selected, we'll go to the Swept Paths panel, and I'll choose Insert Ground Conflict Report. At this point, vehicle tracking will remind me that I'm using the default clearance measurements for this vehicle. If my analysis required very specific measurements, I would need to edit this vehicle's definition or create a new vehicle that matched my requirements. For right now, the default values are fine. When the analysis is complete, I'll press Escape, and we'll zoom in. When vehicle tracking runs the ground conflict report, it compares the entire swept path against a civil 3D surface. It will then colorize areas where the vertical clearance approaches the ground. It will also provide some cross-sectional information showing you the closest point measurements. So in this case, if I back up, if we see no color, we know that everything is fine. If I get a little bit closer, I can see that we have some green. That means we're approaching the ground. If I zoom in on cross-section A, it shows me at the worst point, we were two and a half tenths from touching. Note that we also have a yellow zone. Here we're getting closer to the ground. I can see that at my worst point, right here, we are just over a tenth from touching. Let's back up. So this is actually a good thing. This shows me that I can make the corner vertically, and as low as that trailer is, I know it's not going to scrape the crown of the road. Let's take a look at some of the other colors we may see when running an analysis like this. I have a layer turned off. Let me turn this on. I'll press Escape, and we'll zoom in. So if we see green or yellow, we are approaching the ground, but we've not touched it just yet. If we see orange, magenta, or red, we have penetrated the ground, and then the color change shows us by how much. Obviously, red is the worst. When finished reviewing the analysis, I'll back this up, and we'll center the drawing on screen. 
As you can see, Autodesk Vehicle Tracking makes it easy to compare a vehicle's swept path against a civil 3D surface. Using Vehicle Tracking, we can quickly ensure that all necessary vehicles can successfully navigate a proposed design. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.